Isaac Morton will always pitch from that right side of the rubber. To the lefty Caleb Hill, our St. Joseph Health first pitch is cut on and missed. Your primary partner for primary care and as the leading health care provider in the Brazos Valley. St. Joseph Health proud to be the official health care provider of Texas A&M Athletics. The 0 1 to Hill. Fly ball into shallow left center field. Comedio out. Caden Sorrell in. It's the left fielder Sorrell. See, he loses the cap on that. Slightly different from the home run robbing, losing his cap oh, in oh, Columbia on listen, the top well, play sports it, center. It's not a fashion show, right? As long as you catch the ball, it doesn't matter what you've got on. <laughs> so I, I texted JB Moss and I said, boy, that was a JB like catch there in left field by Caden Sorrell. Do you know he tracked down his catch against Mississippi State? Well, I'm sure he's got it saved on his phone. <laughs> Track down. We will see JB this weekend. Fastball is a strike to Mason Lytle hitting 406 is Lytle. Some of these numbers in the Roadrunner lineup, Andrew, are a little gaudy. This is one of them. Morton ahead, 0 and 1. And now ahead, 0 and 2. Michael Banks is our home plate umpire. Clint Fagan at first, Michael Durantis at second, and Clayton Ham, third base umpire. Two strikes on the right-handed hitting Mason Lytle. Pitch on the way. Got him. Swing it. A miss. Struck him out. He went upstairs. First strikeout for Morton. One of those backup sliders that ends up working for you as a pitcher. It's unintentional, but a lot of times it can kind of back up on the hitter. It's make the hitter second guess himself, and he gets a swing through from a really talented hitter in Lytle for his first punch out of the game. Good start here for Isaac Morton. Alexander Olivo is the batter. Two down, the base is empty. Open stands from the left side for Olivo. 330 is what he is hitting. That may have hit his back foot, and it does. It has been free bases that has been a little bit of an Achilles heel for Isaac Morton. Whether it's been hit batters or walks. Yeah, kind of been his, the one Bugaboo with his game yeah. early in his career, right? And that's why he reminds me so much of a young Corbin Martin. Mm. Because we know the arm talent is as good as anybody on this roster, not named Chris Cortez. Yeah. Great comp, Grani. Righty, righty. Fastball on the outside corner for a strike. And you know, it's not been him losing a hitter to a walk or him hitting a hitter that's been the problem. It's been the inability to adjust and rein it back in. That's where he's gotten himself into trouble. We saw it last week in the midweek against uh, Texas State and San Marcos. The 0-1 lifted down the right field line where Braden Montgomery will drift over to that line to retire UTSA in the top of the first. The road runners, nothing. Tech that is an anomaly, usually north or south, but not from the east. Here's Gavin Grahomak. And the first pitch from Kingsbury is low. One ball and no strikes. Gavin at 319. Hit two home runs. Those were his two hits on the weekend at Columbia. Numbers 10 and 11. Righty righty matchup. Fastball below the knees. It's 2 0. Oh. Now 39 driven in for the freshman. Kingsbury's 12th appearance of the season. Only works 17.2 innings coming in. One of the more reliable relievers, it would appear, for Coach Hallmark's Roadrunners. Pat Hallmark. Their head coach, so much success, played at Rice, coached at Rice, College World Series every season. And he is from Westbury High School. That is where my partner Dave Elmendorf is a Hall of Famer. Westbury Husky. <laughs> yeah. Three and one the count to Gavin Grohovac. Leading off the bottom of the first after a scoreless top half. Kingsbury first base side of the rubber. On his hands, and he fights that off to the right side. It's three and two to Gavin Grohovac. Kingsbury's got a little giddy up. It's a short stride, short arm. Fastball right the scoreboard. Been in the 92 to 94 range here to start. So whatever the number says, it looks like it'll get on you a little bit quicker because of that arm action. A little crossfire, too, for righties to deal with. 3-2. The other way foul. Full count to Gavin Grohovac. Until his 0 for 5, he was on a six game hitting streak, snapped on Sunday. Fouled in and out of the mid of Brock Parma. And already seeing a little bit 
you know, I felt like Gavin was a little frustrated with himself over the course of that week in South Carolina. And just the way he finished at bats uh, and competed with two strikes and seeing a much better plan here today. A kid as talented as Gavin, it doesn't take him long to adjust. 3-2 on the way. Low ball four. That's another thing. When you look back, Andrew, at the series in South Carolina, I thought the one game that the Aggies lost on Sunday, it was a little uncharacteristic in a lot of ways, but one of the things that happened, and it's just the game of baseball you know, turning itself around, is the Aggies were on the wrong end of a lot of full count pitches where right. they have been on the right end so much. And that's just, there's, there's nothing wrong or right about that. To, there's a certain level of just the game of baseball coming out in that way. Three on the right side of the infield for Jace Laviolette. That pitch is low and inside, 1-0 and oh, for Jace. Hits in all three games at South Carolina. Four hits in 12 at-bats including his 14th home run. Grahovac at first, three on the right side of the infield. Pitches away, 2-0 the count to Jace, to Jace Laviolette. And I believe that Sunday game, the home run was part of a trio of balls that left the bat at over 100 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. That was 110 exit velocity on that one, Brony. The 2-0 is lifted, foul territory, third base side, very long run for the shortstop. Matt King and he'll run out of room. He also had a one, was it a 118 on the double uh, on Friday night? So, you know, Jace just hitting between two other first round talents like himself. I think people are getting lost on the season that Jace is having, yeah. if that's even possible. Two and one, the count to Laviolette. Fouled out of play left side. That was an eight pitch first inning for Isaac Moore, Texas A&M. Yeah, and that's one of the keys and one of the things that the coaching staff will want to be seeing going forward is, okay, you know, in the past you've had a good one and then you have a bad one. Yeah. Keep having good ones, stacking good innings on top of one another. Two and two now to Jace Laviolette. Grohovac at first after the leadoff walk. Three on the right side of the infield. Fouled in and out of the mitts of Parmer. Jace stays alive. It's two and two. 3.30 down the lines here at Olsen Field at Bluebell Park. 3.75 to the alleys and 400 to dead center. Grohovac, the leadoff walk, held on by Morrison. That is Michael Early in the first base box for the Aggies. Across the diamond, Nolan Kane in the third base coach's box. Two and two the count. J Jace Laviolette. Outfield deep. Slide step pushes him off the plate. It's three and two consecutive 3-2 three counts for Kingsbury. And you can tell just kind of by the way the Aggies have made early swings on it. Like what I said about that fastball, playing a little bit up. It's like it's surprising some of these AM hitters when they get in the box. And, but they've battled. Joe, both Gavin and Jay's got themselves in four counts. Called strike three on the outside corner. Laviolette strikes out after he thought it was ball four. He's rung up by Michael Banks, one down. Well, we'll see if that ball keeps happening over the course of the game. I thought he might be a little bit off early in the game. You don't know how far he's going to expand with two strikes. Jace, obviously a guy that understands the strike zone very well, walks an awful lot, and take you a little bit to adjust the guy behind the plate. But we'll see if that keeps getting a call to strike the rest of the day. Fouled. That's what Paul Gillier, when he met with all the broadcasters and producers, he talks that buffer zone for umpires. Yeah. They're all different, and that, like, yeah. that wasn't egregiously off the plate. Our track man had it a little bit off, but you could certainly understand that being called a strike. So one down, Grohovac at first, and Braden Montgomery, the switch hitter, batting left against the righty. Drilled to right center field at the wall, off the wall. To third goes Grohovac. Oh, and Nolan had an idea of sending him home and then held him at the very end as that relay came in and skipped past on the left side, but it's second and third on the double by Braden Montgomery. An absolute rocket. 110 off the bat into the teeth of this win. Bangs off the middle of the wall, and I was interested in watching Gavin Grohovic between second and third. It looked like he anticipated maybe getting a stop sign. And Nolan Kane was giving him the wave, and there was some miscommunication. And once that happens, once there's a miscommunication between base runner and coach for whatever reason, once you hesitate, you got to shut it down. Second and third for Jackson Appel. Fastball is low, one ball and no strikes. 
for Appel on a six game hitting streak. He's got nine hits in his last six games. That double by Braden Montgomery, he's now hit in eight. Three they haven't seen. Right. Check swing, gets away. Appeal to third, no swing, says Clayton Ham. Does not get out of the dirt circle. Right side of the infield is deep. That is Morrissey and spin on the right side with spin. A couple of steps, shallow right. Very deep in right is Talsig and towards the line. Bounced foul towards the UTSA dugout on the first base side. It's two and one to Jackson Appel. The Jackson had four hits on the weekend. We were actually talking before the broadcast, as good as these next three have been, we all believe that there's another power surge for each of them. Another bounce foul to the UTSA dugout. It wouldn't surprise me, Andrew, if Jackson Appel, Teddy Burton, and Hayden Schott all ended the season at around the 10 homer mark. But yeah. there's more, they've been fantastic. Yeah. But we know that they can also run the ball out of the ballpark more than we've seen so far. Montgomery's the runner at second. He doubled. Gavin Graho back at third. He walked. Down and in. Three balls and two strikes to Jackson Appel. First four hitters, the third three and two count. With Ted Burton on deck. Kingsbury set. 3 2 pitch. Little nubber in front of the mat, in front of home plate is a foul ball. Oh. And a nice job by Michael Banks. He actually moved to his right to look right up that third base line. Man, if you're Palmer there, the catcher for UTSA, don't you let that ball bounce again to see what it's going to do? I think he thought it, I thought he thought it was fair and would throw to first. Well, uh, if if you do, if it is fair, you're going to get an out at first base and no advance out of the runner. So I would have liked to, if you're UTSA, if you're Pat Hallmark, you're going, let that thing oh, see if it'll go fair. I see what you're saying. Yeah. 3 2. Down low, the bases are loaded. A walk, a double, and a walk. And now Ted Burton with the bases loaded. It's a very similar at bat that we've seen that Jackson Appel have an awful lot this season. Number 27, Ted Burton. Burton is one for three with the bases loaded this season. Three for ten in Columbia this past weekend. Fastball inside. One and zero. Oh. The count to Ted Burton. Rehovac walked. Montgomery doubled. Appel walked. That's low to the bases. Twenty-five pitches already for Kingsbury here in the first. Traditionally been a reliever, so we'll keep an eye on that pitch count. That's over for a strike. It's one and one. South Carolina had played him. Usually there was a runner on and played him to pull, and twice he shot balls through the right side of the infield. He's got the bases loaded, one away here in the bottom of the first. Swing and a miss. And down and in with that fastball. One and two. Yeah, like a little sinker. Had the, one of the better fastballs at the inning for Fisher Kingsbury in terms of life and movement. Out of, ended up out of the strike zone. Got a swing over the top from Teddy B. So now one and two. Hit to right field. Talsig camps under. Now comes in. Here comes Grohovac down the line and will be stopped. Now Montgomery is off second. He's between second and third. And is tagged out for the final outs. Grohovac's got. Ali Comedio shades him towards the middle. Line away. One ball and no strikes. Jace Laviolette in center. Shaded towards left center field. For the left handed hitting Palmer, 299. 1 0. Down low, two balls and no strikes. So, this is a big inning for Isaac Morton. Because of how he's pitched up so far this season, and we've seen him just up and down inning to inning, but also UTSA just grabbed a huge amount of momentum there in the bottom of the first to escape that without allowing a run. Now falls behind three balls and no strikes. So, this is understanding the game from a freshman on the mound. Like, I'm taking the ball and I'm going back out there to get the momentum back for my team. And it's a lot easier said than done, especially against a lot of the swings of bat, like UTSA. The 3 0. Over for a strike, 3 and 1. And in that scenario, you know, obviously, Braden Montgomery makes a mental error and just takes off and runs with his head down. But we were talking about it during the break. A freshman in Gavin Grahovic, you, you want to force the issue between third and home. 3 and 2 now. You want to force that issue between third and home and not just hang out at third and allow that tag to be made 
you know, if you're going to be put in a bad situation, at least make the Roadrunners play catch a little bit. Because if two end up on that bag, one's tagged out for the final out of the inning. 3-2 is up high to walk. Lead off walk here in the second. That's what you're wanting to avoid there. Lead off hitter after the Roadrunners grab some momentum, as I mentioned. You know, that's, that's a freshman in Gavin that's probably not been in that situation much, even as talented as he is. That may be a kind of a new situation for him on the baseball field. So again, if you just if he moves off a third and he forces UTSA to make make some throws between third and home, they may bobble one. You may luck your way into a run. Fastball way outside. One ball and no strikes. James Tausig's the batter. Left-handers hitting 267 this season. Middle infield double play depth. It is Camarillo at short, Chestnut at second base. Lead off walk to Brock Palmer. Throws that sweeper over for a strike. It's one and one. But you know, Brayton tagging from second base there in the bottom of the first was, it's a little unnecessary. You like, Even if Gavin goes and there's a throw home and he's safe, you're still in scoring position with two outs. Right. You need to really force the issue to third base. Two and one the count to Brock Farmer. Lead off walk, excuse me, to Talsig. The lead off walk to Farmer. He's held on by Burton. The two one from Morton. Nine away, three and one. Fell behind three and oh. Then two strikes. Then the walk, now three and one. More pitches to these two batters in this second inning than the entire first inning. Throw to first, back safely is Parmer. Sometimes these young pitchers have trouble dealing with space to their arm side. So righty throwing to lefty, he's got all that space over there in the right-handed batter's box. And sometimes it can be difficult to rein that focus back in toward the plate because you've got all that area to miss to the arm side. Three and one. The pitch to Towsick. Over for a strike. Better there. He got it to his glove side to a left. Is that exaggerated because he's on the first base side of the rubber? No, I don't know that it matters where you stand. It's mm -hmm. just kind of a subconscious vision thing. I've thrown a lot of batting practice in my day where I've missed to that side, that open side a lot to a left hand. Count full. There goes the runner. That's ball four. Yeah, the AM dugout asking why that is a ball, and I'm curious as to why it's a ball either. The track man? I mean, right down the middle. It's egregiously a strike. Instead, back to back walks. First and second. Well, let's see if the Roadrunners go bunt here. Moresi, 281 homer and six RBIs coming in and <coughs> might be a good candidate to lay down a sack bunt. Shows bunt, pulls back, pitches high. Well, unless Trackman is off, that's another pitch in the zone at 96. You don't want that with a guy that has struggled in the strike zone. If he starts getting squeezed, it can really mess with him. Bunted, third base side, stays on the grass. Morton fields and threw it away. I mean, he sailed that baby. That goes into the tarp. A run will score. He compounded that by double clutching. Why is the second runner coming in? He's being called back by Clayton Hamm. Yeah, that's not a plus one scenario. Throw came from the infield. And, you know, just PFP, man. He, he picked it up. It looked like he was in control, but maybe moved a tad Watch slow. Watch how, uh, yeah, he delayed, and then, whew, does that sail goes over that fence. I think he, he thought he had more time than he did, maybe. He looked up and went, oh my gosh, the runner's almost already to first base, so had to speed himself up once he caught the ball. And on court one down the right field line. And really, might be lucky that it went into that well where the tarp is, Andrew, because if it if it hits that diagonal fence, it may shoot out and allow another run to score. Right. So now second and third, nobody out. 
for Hector Rodriguez. That's lifted into the seats left field side by the Aggie bullpen. So one of the things you always do is, as a coach is take inventory of how you allow runs. So let's take inventory of that run. Free you know, base. Free, free base. base. And a free base on a tough call, like the 3-2 pitch to Tausig was right down the middle and got caught a ball. 1-1. Sweeper stays away. 2-1. But, but then a bunt. So, you know, the Roadrunners have scored a run and have now two men in scoring position, and the ball has traveled all of about 30 feet this inning. The 2-1. High chopper. That's going to be fielded by Chestnut on the run. Off balance. He threw that away. It's 3-0. UTSA, hold on, hold on. Well, they're calling time because the throw went into the, into dugout. the dugout. Gotcha. At first base umpire, Clint Fagan. All right, so continue to take inventory, right? The Roadrunners have now scored three runs. I believe this is what's officially known as a mess. Yeah, it's been a mess of an inning, no question. This ball is chopped right in front of the plate. Once Isaac's got, got to field this. Once it got over his head, it was going to be a really tough play for Chestnut because of where he was when he fielded it. And it was there yeah. in a big way. It was a good first inning, but it was an 18-pitch second inning. He's out 26 pitches, only 14 strikes. As the big 6'8 right-hander Zane Bidmaev comes on, and he faces Zane Spin. At second base is Rodriguez. Three are in here in the second. Swing and a miss. He came down and in. It's nothing in two. For Bidmive, Max Wiener says he's a super strike thrower. That big riding fastball, the sweeper. And that splitter works as a change for him. Still nobody out. Runner at second. Three runs in. Three nothing UTSA here in the second. Pitch to Zane Spin. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on three pitches. Really good stuff out of the bullpen from Big Zane. Spun him that slider that kind of tied him in knots and made him fall down the pitch before. And why not go right back to it? Don't have to make it better. He's caught in the same spot and forced the hitter to see if he can make an adjustment pitch to pitch. Spin could not. Inning in two thirds at Texas State a week ago. Caleb Hill, the batter. Breaking ball stays high to the left handed hitting Hill. Rodriguez off second. Could not check his swing. One and one. You can see the life on that slider from up here and the depth of it forces some really disjointed swings from UTSA so far. Bid Mize 1 1. Bounced foul, first base side. Luke Jackson went the first two and a third a week ago against Texas State. And then Bid Mize, all he gave up was a single to Rashawn Galloway. And he's hitting it two thirds. 1 2. That hit him on the hands. Two strike fastball trying to get in after all those sliders and just rides in a little bit on Zane Van Mime. I don't hate the pitch call. I don't hate them trying to get in there with two strikes and a really good hitter. Now Mason Lytle. Isaac Morton struck him out in the first. He's up with first and second, one away. Stays upstairs, one ball and no strikes. It's now the fourth free base runner of the inning for UTSA. Yep. Fly ball into left center field where Jace LaViolette is over in the gap for out number two. Well, one thing we've learned about this team, and I actually wrote it in an article this week, Andrew, is when you come watch this year's a and baseball team play, you're, the one thing that really sticks out about them is the talent. We knew that coming in, but if you go watch them play, you think about the talent that we're watching. There's professional baseball players all over the roster. But one thing that I think that's kind of slept on is their willingness to fight with you and their toughness. Yeah. Levo takes that down and in. So 
three to nothing in the top of the second inning. So what? Keep it there and let's go to work offensively and let's fight. Like I don't think this team is just okay losing a midweek game. Like they want to win every time they go out. Over first. No, no, it's not. A high strike not being called by Michael Banks. Trackman has that as a strike, and that's not even the buffer zone. Two and zero, the count to Oliva. Sliders across for a strike. It's two and one. Three nothing UTSA. Three in this inning. Runners at first and second, two away. Bid Mives two one. Rounded foul as the UTSA dugout first base side. But that was something that that 2022 team had in spades. And they weren't certainly as talented as this 2024 roster. But if this 2024 roster is going to play with that kind of synergy and cohesion and will to win, that's going to lend itself to a lot of wins from now the end of the season. 2-2, waiting on that, letting the ball travel as Olivo, and he lifts that out of play. Well, the bleacher seating and left. Still 2-2. Two and, two. and you can come into the dugout if they're able to escape this jam and go, okay, that was kind of architects of our own demise. Mm -hmm. Let's clean it up and go to work from, for the remainder eight, in, the eight innings. Open stands for Olivo, 2-2. Two, two. No pairs. It's three and two. Laviolette is over towards left center field. Sorrell a bit towards the line and left. Runners will be off with the pitch. Three and two and two outs. Bid Mive comes home. Hot shot to right field for a base hit. Rodriguez comes home. He will score. It's 4 nothing UTSA. To third goes Caleb Hill. RBI single for Levo, his 17th of the year. You know, one of the dangerous games you play with a team that's hitting well over 300 coming into the night is you've given them all these free base runners and they this really got, haven't gotten a big hit, game. Andrew. So, you know, at some point it's coming with the top of this roadrunner order, and Olivo does a nice job staying on a full count slider and hooking a ball into right. Runners on the move, so an easy RBI, and they add to their lead. Matt King's the ninth roadrunner to come to the plate. Up and in with a fastball. One ball and no strikes. King flying to Braden Montgomery to end the first inning. Runners at the corners, two away. 1-0 from bid five. Slider on the inside corner for a strike. What is the biggest deficit this team has faced this year? It's, it's, one, be it's four, one of the midweeks, isn't it? Four or five runs, right? Yeah. One and one in a righty-righty matchup, bid five and King. To the net behind home plate, it's one and two. I thought at times over the weekend, Maggie pitchers could get the two strikes. Now, again, I get an SEC lineups. The third strike is hard. I get it. I thought South Carolina did a good job hitting with two strikes. And they the didn't weekend. miss many mistakes. No, so no, no, Justin no, no, no. Lampkin made some on Sunday over yeah. the plate with two strikes. The Gamecocks did not miss. One and two, the count to Matt King. Under his helmets. He ducks under that pitch, two and two. Now, as I say that, Aiden shot with two strike RBIs. Ted Burt with two strikes. The Aggies did it as well. At the corners, two way, two two on the way. Found out a play right side. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if we're looking up in early June and this Roadrunner team has found their way into a regional. Seven and two in conference. Won their last three in conference. They've won, won their last four weekend series. Here's the 2-2. Lifted into shallow right. Chestnut out. Montgomery in. And Braden makes the grab. Nine come to bat for UTSA in the top of the slightly open stance. And he worked on that stance after struggling a little bit earlier in this season. And a first pitch fastball by Kingsbury, who worked out of a bases loaded one out jam in the first and the next time he takes them out he's got a four run lead yeah he'll feel like he's got a new lease on life right yep the 0-1 and he just lifts that into left field <laughs> shot he's now hitting six straight that's his 12th hit in the last six games
really nice approach and kind of continues to just get hits. And that's, he's very hitterish. And as a baseball coach and a baseball guy, like if you're called hitterish, that's a good quality to have. And Jack Moss was very hitterish. Hunter Hoss, very hitterish. We saw this all throughout the fall and early spring with Hayden Schott. He just got a bunch of hits. Here's Ali Camarillo. He's on a nine game hitting streak. Fastball down the heart for a strike. Ali had two of them on Sunday, including an RBI single. It was in the eighth inning of that game. Closed the Aggies to within one. Down and away with that fastball, one and one. Just checking the radar, Andrew. We a little disturbance out brewing toward Caldwell. Hoping that it dissipates before it gets over here. It does look like it's got some red, so maybe some lightning in it. The one one is lifted into the nets off to the right. One and two to Ali Camarillo. So while games are being played, we root for the Aggie Dome. And when we're in a drought, we hope that it goes away, right? <laughs> One and two. I'm just glad we're playing tonight. I'm with you. Hopefully we don't get any stoppages. You want to get through clean nine innings without any delays. Swing and a foul tip into the mix of Parmer. That's the second strikeout for Kingsbury. One away with shot at first. Ali expands his own a little bit on the slider. Saw so him do that a little bit whenever he's struggled. South Carolina got him on that same pitch a couple of times. We're just trying to cover that outside half, and Kingsbury does a good job of throwing a kind of a decision pitch and starts on that outer edge, and you're always going to run out of bat there. Caden Sorrell, the batter. Fastball too far inside under his hands. One ball and no strikes. Caden had his eight-game hitting streak snapped. He went 0 for 2 on Sunday. It wasn't just his catch. Also threw out Talmadge Lecroy. <laughs> he had a heck of an inning. I think the biggest part of that game, <laughs> that play was him being surprised that Lecroy was going to try to run to second. Yeah. 2 and 0 the count to the freshman. Shot at first, who let off the second inning with a single. Slide step, cut on and missed. 2 and 1. <laughs> Fisher Kingsbury. 36 pitches. One down here in the second. Skied left side foul. Rodriguez dropped it as he came back to his left. Sorrell, second life. Yeah, it's almost like he overcompensated for the win there. Pushing that ball toward the Aggie dugout. I thought his first few steps, I thought he was overly aggressive, and it turns out I was a little bit right. He's fading back toward the third base line, trying to catch up to that ball as it falls toward the Bluebell Park turf. But another opportunity here for Sorrell. See if he can make it sting. South Carolina didn't catch the pop by Grahovac. He homered to dead center. This pitch is away to Caden Sorrell. It was a huge turn of events. Another full count for Caden Sorrell. We've seen him in this count quite a bit recently. There goes shot, starting and stopping, and then that's lifted out of play, left field side. It's a good job there. That ball, similar. I probably caught more of the plate than the one that got Jace in the first inning, but it's a tough pitch. Like, that's very well located by Kingsbury. Sorrell stays on it, stays over the chest with his plate, and is able to get the barrel there and just move it to see another pitch. Count full shot at first, one away. Pitch from Kingsbury. Fouled straight back. His ability to go the other way, which saw in Arlington, obviously, and not just home runs, but you can see that he's not pull happy. A lot of young guys aren't pull happy any longer, Bronny. Well, and he's really super talented, and like it's only going to get better from yeah. here. And an offseason with Josh Keese was going to do him a lot mm -hmm. of good as well. Count full. Popped up behind home plate. Coming back is Parmer, but in vain. It's out of play. Roadrunners with a lefty up and going in their bullpen. Yeah, 
And don't forget, UTSA came in here last year and what, what Schloss say felt like they beat us 473 to one. <laughs> I don't remember what the final score was, but coach is right. <laughs> Here's the three two. Ball four. Sorrell draws the walk, two on, one out. It's a great at bat. Really good at bat. And that pop up, drop pop up, goes back to hurt now. That ends up being it'll a be free base. And it'll be an error now right. on the third baseman. So here's Travis Chestnut. Three for eight in the early going. Back from the oblique muscle. Shot off second. Sorrell off first for Travis Chestnut. If he bunts this to the first baseman, it's a base hit. Deep behind Sorrell. Instead, he takes that slider inside. It's 1-0. and It's not even that, Andrew. The first baseman's back. Look where the second baseman's playing. Behind second base. If he bunts this past the pitcher, which he is very good at, he can moonwalk to first base. Kingsbury 1-0. Under his hands, 2-0. He's got himself into a good count in an RBI spot. So, shot leads from second. Sorrell from first. Shot singled. Sorrell walked. Surrounding a comedy of strikeout. 2 0. 3 0. Too low. Boy, sometimes you miss time and you get impatient at the plate, but that's not Travis Chestnut. No, and some people were questioning why he tried to bunt in that first and third situation on Sunday in South Carolina, and I'm actually okay with it. Like we've seen Ali Camarillo do in those two out RBI opportunities, there's no difference if he gets it down and he makes it to first base safely. No difference between that and a line drop single up the middle. It's the exact same. Correct. The bunt game for Travis and Ali are, is a weapon. Right. Three ball, no strike count to Chestnut. He is as fast as an in-between the bases base runner. As I, I think I've ever seen at Texas A&M. He put Cray Bratson in that conversation. Mm -hmm. But his quickness is game changing. Here's a 3-0. Down low, it's a four pitch walk. The bases are loaded. Back to the top of the order, and that's our 44 Farms meat of the order. 44 Farms invites you to enjoy premium all natural Angus beef by visiting 44farms.com. 44 Farms, the official beef of Texas A&M Athletics. Back to back innings now for the Aggies with bases loaded and one out. And the first ball, five a chance. Here at Olsen Field at Bluebell Park. Grahovac walked his first time. Kingsbury has walked four through one time through the order. Well, let's see if this is just going to be a conversation from UTSA or an actual change. This is loaded one away for Grohovac. That is a massive lead at first base for Travis Chestnut. Grohovac skies this. Infield fly. Grohovac is out. Runners advance at their own risk. First pitch swinging pops to the second baseman. Don't hate the approach, he just missed it. I mean, you gotta feel like after a pitcher's mound meeting in an RBI spot where the guy has struggled with command, as you mentioned, you're probably gonna get a heater to start. Gavin got his heater and just did miss it. Jason Lavi left the batter. Called third strike his first time up. Rolls to the left side, fielded by Rodriguez, short route to second. Second consecutive inning, the Aggies have the bases loaded, one out, and come up empty. It offensively. Brock Palmer leads off for the Roadrunners. He walked to start that four run. Second inning, first pitch, found in and out of the mid of Jackson Appel. Facing Zane Bidmive. Bouncing ball back up the middle. Comedy all right there under his glove and into center field. It's the Aggies' third error. You don't see that very often. Like he was thought the ball was going to play a little bit higher than it did and just hugged the ground a little bit and got under the shortstop's glove. Camarillo makes the right decision. 
run through the hop. Right if you look, that left elbow yeah. just plays yeah. up a little bit on as he's trying to run through that short hop. And you need to keep that stiff wrist and push through that that ball. And Roadrunners again with a leadoff man on. You know what it is. He just wants a Dos Equis double play. I hope you're right. Swing and a miss. Big cut by Tausik, who also drew a walk in that second inning. Zane bid my third base side of the rubber. Comedy has shaded a bit towards the middle and Grahovac towards the hole on the left side. Burton holds Parmer at first, the 0 1. Miss down low. One ball and one strike. Yeah, certainly just mentally not sharp tonight. Would you agree? Yeah, that's where the maturity comes in that Schla Schloss talks about. 1-1. One, one. Lined foul out in front. Look, and you're going to have nights like this. That's fine. That's, as long as that's not the, a characteristic of your team. And I would say through 32 games, this has been a very uncharacteristic start. Some of the midweeks have been like this, though. Sure. But they've always found a way to battle back. Right. Playing Townsick to pull. Sails a throw to first, does bid mime. That's the fourth error for the Aggies. Two in the second, two here in the third. And the second one from a pitcher. That Maya was holding until late in the pitch clock, and we've seen AM do that and then go to the plate when they're up in counts, 0 2 1 2. UTSA does like to run. Most notably, though, with Lytle. In fact, he's the only one that's attempted more than two, so I shouldn't say they don't they, they like to run. They don't like to run. In on the hands. Foul to the net behind home plate. One and two. Count remains. To James Talsic. When Palmer reached on an error, goes to second on a throwing error. The error by Comedio, the throwing error on the pickoff attempt by Bidmaev. One and two. To Talsic. Too high, two and two. Approaching 30 pitches out of the pen is Bidmaev. Dalsy keeps those hands just above the belt, fouls that off. Count remains two and two. Zane hasn't pitched bad. You know, the single he gave up, the RBI single to Olivo in that four-run top of the second was a ball that was almost off the plate away that Olivo hooked through the four-hole for an RBI single. Swing! And as he struck him out, he went upstairs. Big punch out there. That's out number one. Here's Morrissey. Moresi, sacrifice and the error, all part of that four-run inning. Swing and a miss, he loses the bat, and that goes over the on-deck circle. Where Hector Rodriguez retrieves, and he had to get out of the way of that helicopter. Heart and mouth moment for the on-deck hitter there. That ball hit halfway up the net. I mean, excuse me, the bat, halfway up the net. Rodriguez in position to field that. Bouncing ball to the right side, Chestnut Fields. Underhand toss, retires Morrissey. To third goes Parmer with two away. Another good slider from Badmiev there. UTSA third baseman, it's, number 11, Hector Rodriguez. Gets Morrissey to roll over. Nice easy two hopper for Chestnut. And Look, if you're AM with how you've started this game, you, 
you really need to leave that runner there at third base and just get off the field feeling good about yourself. Ground ball right side, backhanded by Burton. To Bidmive covering. W. First pitch, it's a fastball cut on and missed by Braden Montgomery. In all things considered, Andrew, I think we'd have to say that this has been the poorest start to a game that we've seen from Texas A&M all season. Inside, three on the right side of the infield for UTSA, and the right fielder, Talsic, is on the warning track. For Montgomery, the switch hitter batting left against the righty, Braylon Owens. Fastball's a strike, it's one and two. His wins have come against UT Arlington. At Baylor, at Incarnate Word. The loss at Texas State. That was a 14-13 slugfest. One, two. Fouled out of play left side. You talked about the maturity of this team, and I talked about the fight of this team, and we haven't seen them face a night like this yet. And it's a midweek, and those can be kind of monotonous. You hate to say that, but they can be. Just missed inside, two and two. Let me add this to you. You just come off the road, and you've got number six coming in. Right. And, and we've seen them be stale in the midweek before and be able to answer it. But obviously, the quality of the opponent tonight, a little bit different than what they've been able to come back in, uh, back, get back from in the past. The two, two is lifted to center field. Mason Lytle towards left center. Makes the grab, Montgomery retired. Good pitch by Owens there. Fastball in on the corner with two strikes. Ties up Braden just enough. Jackson Appel, the batter, walked his first time up. Switch hitter bats left against the righty Owens. Still deep in the outfield. Jackson the other way down the left field line. Running is Hill and running out of room is Hill. An oppo popo for Jackson Appel. The home run puts the Aggies on the board. It's four to one. It's an outstanding swing on a 93 mile an hour heater. Jackson stays on it, shoots it out over that left field wall. Let's see if that gives his team a little bit of juice here as we head into the middle innings tonight, Andrew. And our first bubbles. That is. And man, he's been such. So good for the Aggies, great swing. Chin down, chest over the plate. Not trying to do too much with that ball, just find a barrel. That's that's kind of been Jackson's M.O. since he's gotten here. It's now hits in seven in a row for Jackson Appel. But that goes back to the point that you made earlier about you would not be surprised if he's in double digits in home runs by the time this season yeah, ends. He, because he's able to do that the opposite way. We've seen him. Hit a ball over section 12 to the pull side. Had the big home run right-handed against Texas. Fastball to Burton is low and away. One ball and no strikes. Again, this this four, five, six in the order probably gets a little bit overlooked because of you've got three first rounders to, to, at the start. 1-0. But when they get going, just like we saw this weekend, like yeah. they essentially carry the offense from a run production standpoint. Right. They were a combined 13 for 37. Bouncing ball to shortstop. That's where Matt King is. Throws out Burton by a step to a left. Hayden shot. Single to left his first time up. That's another good pitch from Owen to the 2-0 count after giving up a homer. Dots a fastball down and away. I'd I wonder if you asked Teddy if he'd take it back, if he wanted to swing at that pitch. Pushes shot off the plate, down and in. One ball and no strikes. Shot now 12 for his last 21. Go again. Two balls, no strikes. You know, even when he started the season, and he wasn't obviously hitting at this clip, he always feels like he's in control of his emotions and his body at the plate. It's underrated part of being a hitter. 2-0. -oh. 
Back up the middle, he's two for two. You know, it's it's an old guy, man. You just you don't ever get too high or too low, and you understand that as good as you're going, it can be taken from you like that. So I think him being able to control his emotions in the batter's box through the ups and downs is only going to lend himself to long-term success in this season. Good to see him have that success. Here's Ali Camarillo, fastball at the belt for a strike. Ali struck out his first time up. One of the two strikeouts for a starter, Fisher Kingsbury. Two innings, no runs, two hits, four walks, two strikeouts, 47 pitches, 26 were strikes. 0-1. Ollie hits this well to center field, but shy of the warning track is Lytle for out number three. But the Aggies get on the board here in the third on the fourth home run of the SEC tournament last year. Down and away. Best pitch is the slider. That sets up everything for Troy Wansing. It's good to see him back out there. Also the sinker and the changeup, very complimentary as well. Pitching from the stretch, third base side of the rubber. Here's the slider, it's low, two balls and no strikes. Zane Spin leading off UTSA's top of the fourth. Four nothing Roadrunners. Wansing's debut, 2-0. Oh third hit batter. You know, it's gotta be tough, man. You watch half of the season and you finally get your shot even as an older guy, not to have that heart rate beaten out of your chest. I would think so. He's worked so hard to get back, and there a 2-0 slider just comes out of the back of his hand. And Max Wiener to the mound for the Aggies. It's the third straight inning that the Roadrunners have started with the lead. Last year for Troy Wansing and part of that SEC tournament's all-tournament team. Slider down and away to Caleb Hill. We're back to the top of the UTSA order. The third time to the plate for Caleb Hill. With a runner at first and nobody out here in the top of the fourth. Officially 0 for 1. He was hit by a pitch in the second. Slider's a strike, 1 and 1. With tally that free base. You're talking about free base war, Andrew. If you got some time, tally him up maybe between hitters, but it's certainly in the direction of UTSA here in the top of the fourth. A 4-1 four, of the Roadrunners. 1-1, one, one, show bunt, does bunt, third base side, fielded by Grohovac to first for out number one. Sacrifice successful, Hill retired. You know, I'm interested to see if that was really supposed to be a sacrifice because with a four to nothing lead, and maybe Coach Hallmark wants to add on and get this thing outside of a one swing game. But in the fourth inning and you've scored four runs, Hill's one of your better hitters. Good play by Grahovic. Which means good communication right there, right? Yeah, you could, you could see him call off wanting. Mason Lytle, the batter. To right field, Braden Montgomery over towards the line, catches that liner. Tagging from second is spin. He goes to third, two away. You know, one thing that Troy, again, just it's going to take him a little bit to get lathered up and back into... <laughs> Game I conditioning for this. That's perfect. You're right. And, and get him just kind of back in the routine of playing a game. He had that, that bunt there. When the third baseman fields it, the pitcher's job is to replace him at third. He was a little bit late getting over. Uh, and you had spin around the bag, almost try to go first to third on a, on a sack bunt. Two down. Lefty, lefty here. Over for a strike with a slider, 0 and 1. It was his eight shutout innings. The Aggies in a one and done shutout Tennessee in that SEC tournament. And then Troy would come back in the win over Arkansas coming out of the pan on the back end, the 0-1. Fouled out of play by Olivo, 0-2. That sent the Aggies, that was the semifinal Saturday into the final against Vanderbilt. See if the Aggies can put away Olivo. Aren't able to get him last time in a two-strike, two-out count. Went down and hooked a slider through the four-hole for really the only, what I'll call the only true hit of the game for the Roadrunner so far. It was an RBI single. Launching steps off. The only time he can step off without it being a ball. Third base side of the rubber for Wansing. 
Lefty lefty matchup with Olivo. The RBI single gives him 17 driven in. Spin at third. Pitch clock violation. Yeah, the spin keeps faking like he's going to steal home. And again, that may be just wanting, not in kind of game shape and game form. Daggy's playing well off the line with Grahovic, so he's able to get a big primary lead. One and two. Down and away, blocked by Appel. So the Roadrunners playing a little bit of games here. Don't blame them. On a midweek upset win. And already really building a pretty quality tournament resume with a home series win out over number nine now, East Carolina. 2-2. Two -two. Just missed away. Count full. I would imagine this is going to be another slider here. Bouncing ball left side, stopped by Camarillo, long throw, not in time, 5-1 UTSA. The infield single by Olivo gives him second RBI of the game. It was the slider, and it was almost in the same spot as the one he hooked for a base hit. Two-thirds innings, eight walks, 15 strikeouts. Opponents are batting 0-79 against Peary. High bouncer on the first pitch to Grohovac, and he'll rifle across the diamond. Low throw picked out by Burton at first. The key there stayed so far away, right? Hit the nine free bases, three hit by pitch, two walks, four errors for AM. Sorrell, first pitch swinging, lifts that back and out of play. And two of those errors have allowed runners to move from first to second base. The chopper to Chestnut, that would have been an infield single, he throws it away. It gets to the dugout, so it allows the runner to move up, and then the air pickoff throw from Badmiev's. But seven times you've told the Roadrunners, you get to go to first base without doing anything. That's So seven of the nine free passes have happened between home and first, and it is, without a doubt, the biggest story of this game so far. 5-1 Roadrunners, a one-ball, one-strike count to Caden Sorrell, leading off the bottom of the fourth. Change away, two balls and one strike. Sorrell drew a walk. Aggies had the bases loaded one out in the first, came up empty. Bases loaded one out in the second, came up empty. 2-1 to Caden Sorrell. Skies this right side, shallow right field. It's the second baseman spin. Makes the grab. One away. Not a bad swing from Sorrell. Swung at the right pitch, just missed it. Seen the Aggies do that a couple of times with some fastballs. Second second baseman, number four, Travis right pitch Chester. to swing at, put a good swing on it. And when you hit a ball straight up in the infield like that, at a high exit velocity, to me, I was pretty encouraged by that when that happened to me or when I see guys with power that, that hit the ball that way. I mean, you're just off of it. Here's Chestnut. Down and away, one ball and no strikes. I think back to that UTSA fourth inning of man. You know what I mean when I say manufacturing a run, getting a run. It's something that Schloss tells us all the time. The one out of Chestnut on the outside corner. Line. You never know what the winning run is going to be. You can't have enough runs. No, and you right? was, so Pat Hallmark says we're going to get one right here. Yeah, sure, and, and they did a good job of executing with two strikes there. And really, it's a defensive alignment thing that really beat A&M. Mm -hmm. Kind of a butt out swing by Olivo just rolls a ball into the right spot, but. Because you had the leadoff hitter get on by hit by pitch, <laughs> yeah. he makes his way to third. It puts you in that in that scenario. One two to Chestnut, way outside two and two. So the hit by pitch, the sacrifice, the line to right allows him to tag and go to third, and then Olivo with two strikes, the infield single for his second RBI. Five one UTSA, two two on the way to Travis Chestnut. Takes a call third strike. He struck him out two away here in the fourth. That'll bring up Gavin Grohovac. And another thing that UTSA has done with help of AM has gotten lead off hitters on base in each of the last three innings. If I'm not mistaken, the only time that the Aggies have gotten a leadoff hitter on is the top of the, the bottom of the first. Grohovac's walk. Actually, actually shot single to start the second. Lined into left field, the two-out single for Gavin Grohovac. Okay. 
There's been a lot that's happened already. We're only in the bottom of the four. I'm thinking the same thing. Yeah. But that is the, a the Aggies fifth hit of the day. Gavin Sisson involved in the, ball the ball six hole. 106 miles an hour off the back there. The Aggies have hit the ball certainly a lot harder than the Roadrunners have, but it doesn't always mean anything in this nope. game. Here's Jace Laviolette. 0 for 2. Fouled straight back. Put three on the right side for UTSA. Not nearly as exaggerated as the shortstop. King is behind and just to the right, right field side of second base. Spin is about three steps on the outfield grass. And with Grohovac at first, Morrissey has to we can all split hold him on. Shortstop vacated. Staying at third is Rodriguez. One strike on Laviolette. Time called by Jace Laviolette before the pitch. To the first offensive conference. Been a lot of conversations this week about the pitch clock and what it's doing to Major League Baseball in terms of health of pitchers as we have seen just a rash of guys go down with elbow issues. And the NF, uh, excuse me, the MLBPA comes out today and blames it on the pitch clock. Well, it's a contributing factor. It's not the reason. 0-1, oh, high fly ball, shallow center. It is the shortstop who's in shallow center and nestles under Matt King and the Aggies in two out single. Looks like good weather. Brock Palmer leading off. Brock Beery slings that in for a strike. It's 0-1. One pitch to Matt King ended UTSA's fourth for Brock Peary. In on the hands, and he chops a foul first base side. It's 0-2. Wait, so do I get .25? And now three on the right one side one for point. the Aggies, and Gavin Grohovac goes to play shortstop, so third base is vacated for Brock Palmer. Jay Slavulet in center is shaded towards left center and shallow. 0-2. Fouled out of play. Left side. Bit of a haze setting in over Bluebell Park. Just check the radar. Seems like we are in the clear for a little while. That storm out toward Caldwell dissipated. Two strikes on Palmer leading off. Stays way outside. One ball and two strikes. Palmer led off the second with a walk. He led off the third. Got a board on an error. Four of them for the Aggies tonight. One and two the count. To Brock Palmer, pitch from Peary. Down and in. I'm at two points, baby. Moves that back foot. It would have been another hit batter. Avoids that. We'll face a 2 2. On the inside corner, he struck him out with a fastball. One down here in the fifth. Great pitch from Peary. Aggies retire leadoff man. And I'll tell you what, it's a really good job of catching this pitch by Jackson Appel. Watch it move up through the catch, presents it well to the umpire. Ball that's down in the zone. If you're able to catch it on the rise, and one thing that's really underrated for catchers is timing and rhythm through your catch. One down, fastball stays away to James Towsick. It's that thrust. It's, it's smooth the way Appel is, the way he receives it. And, and that's, you know, catchers go in and out of timing just like hitters do uh, with they, how they receive the ball. Swing and a miss, one and one. But you have guys in college and, and obviously professional baseball that have made an art of it, and it is now one of the most tracked statistics for catchers is strike stolen. One and one to Towsick. 0 for 1 officially with a walk and a run scored. Swing and a miss. One and two. And, you know, that's one of the things that if we ever go to these robot umpires, it's going to take away a lot of the art of catching. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, Brody. One and two, the count. Towson, the righty Peary, the left-handed hitting Towson. One, two offering. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. He had him off rhythm, didn't he? Yeah, Brock Peary's coming into this game and giving the Aggies a real shot on the mound after being pretty choppy through the first four innings. He's come in. In an RBI spot for the Roadrunners last inning, or excuse me, with a man on and two outs in the last inning, got a one pitch chopped ground ball and then has made quick work of King and Farmer, excuse me, Palmer to start here at the top of the fifth. And UTSA is going to take an offensive timeout. 
Alfonso Morrissey is the next hitter. But that was really Pat Hallmark talking to his coaching staff. Yeah, I think that was probably just it's talking to the staff, veiled as a way to try to slow down the end. Now, Madam Premier, the first baseman, number zero, Lorenzo Moresi. Lorenzo Moresi might be the first Italian-born player. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know, can't remember one playing on Olsen Field. No. Fastball is low, one ball and no strikes. Sorrell towards the line and left. Laviolette towards left center, in center. 1-0. Shows bunt down the third base line, and Grohovac fields that two-thirds of the way up the line in foul territory. It's one and one. Remember the opening series of the year, McNeese State ran out a left-hander from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and you did such a wonderful job with the pronunciation of his last name and his hometown and his high school. Yeah. Monaco sounds like it might be a little Italian. Could oh, you, it's a lot of Italian. Could you, would you like to take a <laughs> shot at the hometown for Lorenzo Moresi? Maserata? Oh, I thought you were going to give me more gusto than that. You <laughs> <laughs> Look, my parents are from Bicity. Bicity, Italy. So, Maserati. Okay. Well, have, when's the last time you visited? No, I haven't. No. Would I love to? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm sure Coach Hallmark liked that at recruiting trip if he got to go out to Italy. <laughs> be awesome. <laughs> visit with the family. One and two is the count. Brock Peary sends the one two home. The play left side. Brock is the transfer from Arizona State. He does have a history, too, of, of providing some length. He's been typically used in short stints here at AM, but you go back and look at some of his outings at Arizona State, and it wasn't uncommon for him to three, four innings. He was a starter at one point. Two down bases empty. Sweeper stays away. Two and two. The longest he's gone this season with the Aggies. Consecutive outings against the Gators and then against Prairie View. He went two innings. Each of those outings. It's two and two now with two down bases empty. This time away. Three balls and two strikes. Well, I would imagine when Roadrunners took that offensive timeout, this is exactly what they were looking mm -hmm. for. Didn't want another quick trip to the plate. 3 2. Got him swinging a miss, struck him out. He struck out the side. Did Brock Perry. He just got some important outs for the Aggies and kind of quieted the scenes for the pitching staff. Braden Montgomery leads off. Braden's one for two. Doubled in the first. He's hitting 390. Is Braden. Before he fly to center, he was at 390. Now hits in eight consecutive games for Montgomery. Switch hitter batting left. Check swing. Did he go? Swing, says third base umpire Clayton Ham. It's 0 1. Ground ball to the right side. Under a diving Zane spin and into right field. Two for three is Montgomery. You put three on the right side with spin and shallow right, and he still knocks it through. Yeah, when you hit the ball as hard as some of these guys do on the AM roster, Texas Aggie catcher, number 20. You know, there is a correlation to exit velocity and getting hits. That's why it is an important metric to measure. And the Aggies, that's their sixth hit of the day. They only got one run. UTSA sitting on five runs with three hits. Overall, in the batter's box, the a has been the better team. Here's Jackson Appel. Opposite field home run his last time. He might do it again. Towards left field, back at the wall. He did! Off the scoreboard! Another oppo popo for Appel. It's 5-3! to three. People talk about this top three, but you better start talking about the top four in this order. Jackson Appel continues to have a fantastic season for the Aggies. He's caught extremely well. His at-bats are competitive. You mentioned it before the broadcast, Andrew. It feels like sometimes these pitchers get through the top three of the a and order, and they're like, okay, we, I can finally relax. But you better not with this guy in the batter's box. What a beautiful swing. That ball starts in, runs out over the plate, and Jackson Appel runs that off the Bethancourt scoreboard in left center. It's 5-3. to three. He's driven in 
all three. Ted Burton is the batter in a first pitch fastball at the knees for a strike. Now five homers, 20 driven in for a pill. Halfway to double figures, partner. <laughs> Down and away, one and one. And there's going to be a stretch coming for this guy in the batter's box where he's going to hit three or four and really boost his number. He's just too good of a player, and he's done it so far in his career. Every year, I believe, at Michigan, he come in with 30-plus career homers. Yes. The 1-1. Missed away in and out of the mitts of the catcher, Brock Palmer. It's 2-1. And, and we talked about kind of that east winds, uncharacteristic win here at Bluebell Park tonight. For left-handers, if they hit the ball toward that left-field corner, it's really going to shoot that ball. 2-1 to Ted Burton. Missed outside, 3-1. and one. All right, Teddy in a plus count. He got into this same similar scenario a couple innings ago, and he swung at the pitch. He probably didn't really want to swing at. Braylon Owens offers a 3-1 to Burton. Low ball four. First time on base tonight. And Hayden shot the batter, who's yet to be retired. He's due for two. Texas Aggie designated hitter number five, Hayden. Two Scott. singles for shot, one to left, one to center. And he bats with Burton at first. Still nobody out. The two-run home run by Hayden Shot cuts UTSA's lead to five to three. Every time he... with Ted Burton at first, still nobody out. Overhand fastball up and in to the left-handed hitting shot. It's one and oh. Connor Miles, his 11th appearance. He's 0-2 with an 878 ERA. Last pitched against Tulane back on March 30th. Inside, pushes shot off the plate. It's 2-0. It's got to be a pretty tough matchup for a left-hander. Big long arm swing over the top, kind of cross-firing. Burton at first. 2-0 to shot. Over for a strike. It's 2-1. Braylon Owens goes two innings and three batters. So far, three runs on five hits. He's responsible for Burton, whom he walked. Foul in between Nolan Kane and the Aggie. Dugout, third base side, two and one. Four fastballs so far to shot. Miles may be have set him up for a breaking ball here. I don't know what the shape looks like, but if it's a sweeper, tough to deal with for shot here with two strikes. Two two. Smothered up the first base side to the UTSA dugout. Two ball, two strike count to Hayden Shot. Heater again there. Burton at first. Shot fouls that into the net behind home plate. Miles got away with one there. Mm -hmm. Hitting's hard, man. <laughs> What's the old line? Round, round ball, round bat, hit it square. That's right. That's what you're asking him to do. Slightly open stance for shot. Burton at first. Still nobody out. Two in, it's 5-3. Shot with a fly ball to center field. Lytle towards the gap in left center. Out number one here in the fifth. It's a good bounce back from Miles after he fell behind 2-0 and oh and really wasn't close. Comes back and starts filling up the strike zone with heaters. Here's Ali Camarillo, 0 for 2 tonight. As Hayden Shot talks to Cade Sorrell on deck. Give him a quick scouting report. Yeah, this is going to be tough on left. I'm probably sure that's what he said. And a balk. He lost his footing. A balk sends Burton to second base. I was just getting ready to say, I wonder if they're going to put Burton in motion because of the big leg kick and the long arm swing from Miles. If you would have first moved him, see if you get him in scoring position now for Ali and Sorrell. But Miles does it for you. 6-4 Australian on the mound for UTSA. Fastball below the knees and outside. 1-0. Roadrunners got a little bit of a League of Nations here. Yes, they do. Italian, Australian. Is Any other non-U.S. borns on that roster over there? 1-0. Comedy 0 into netting behind home plate. 1-1.
this is where I'm supposed to make a Louisiana joke, right? Right here. I only went to school over there. Okay. I notice where you are now. Well, I grew up close <laughs> enough where I could smell it. I did get, I have a degree from here, too. Let's not forget. One and one to Comedio. Shows bunt, pulls back, takes low. Two and one. If you hear me talk, you'd be surprised that I've got two degrees. You think somebody just gave it to me out of charity? I thought you were one of those schools where you kind of slow down and they throw the diploma through the open window, right? <laughs> two and one. Comedio the other way. That's going to score Burton, and this is a 5-4 game on the RBI single to right by Ali Camarillo. Watch him just keep getting better and better. He swung through that pitch and was a little bit out and around it when he missed it a couple of pitches before. Miles goes back to the heater away. Ali stays right on it, rifles the ball the other way. And man, it's been fun to watch his progression as a hitter. It goes back to what we said, right? These transfers, they keep getting better. Look at this swing. Goes right with that pitch. Nose right down the barrel. And I always say this, chest over home plate. You, if your chest flies off a pitch, you're not going to hit it the other way. The only shot you've got is to flare it off. Lefty, lefty here. Throw to first, Camarillo back standing. The Aggie offense has been pretty good tonight. You know, outside of, you know, they left some guys on early, but they've had good swings. Mm -hmm. And it's starting to produce runs now. Caden surrounded that 0 for 1 with a walk. And he takes the fastball inside corner for a strike going long. Bases loaded, no outs in the first after Montgomery rifles a ball off the left center, right center for a wall. Bases loaded, no outs in the second. They just didn't get a big hit. No. Pop out, rolled out the third. 0 1. Sorrell. He went off speed on him, missed inside one and one. It's the first one of those we've seen. It looks like a true curveball, too. Which makes sense given his release point more closer to his ear. Yeah. The guys that closer to the ear in their release point are typically going to be more of a 12 6 breaking ball. Smothered towards the on deck circle, UTSA's first base side, one and two. Now, the Aggies saw that from the right side from Ty Good was more over the top. Ty Good, I mean, lives up to his surname. Uh, that, he was outstanding for the game. Yeah. And as Schloss said, he's going to start Saturday for South Carolina. To me, it was like an audition. <laughs> and I'm not sure Becker may not be part of that rotation also. One, two. Hot shot to second. Spin for one. Hitting ending double play. Four, six, three. Another ball hit really hard by the Aggies right at somebody. 106 off the bat from Sorrell. Good pick at second base by Spin. Starts the inning ending double play. UTSA turns their 16th double play. Spin to King to Morrissey. Aggies get upper 90s with sink, the big sweeper, the cutter, and the change. Showing bunt, pulling back, taking a fastball at 99 for a strike to switch hitting Hector Rodriguez batting left against Cortez. First base side of the rubber for Christopher. The 1 Fastball down and in. One and one. Rodriguez, one for two, singled and scored in the four-run second for UTSA. And grounded out to Ted Burton. Christopher's 1-1. One, one. Tied him up with a slider down and in, one and two. Bugs Bunny slider there. <laughs> that was disgusting. Oh, Chris, don't throw that ball out. <laughs> make a ball move like that I'd be trying to hold on to that thing forever you, you, you get it back from the fan if someone oh, fouls yeah. it off right uh, I think this is this was obviously a planned appearance no matter what the score was I think we we're gonna see Cortez tonight did not pitch against South Carolina pitched in two games against Auburn the first and the third game of that series the one two swing and a miss he struck him out back-to-back -back sliders You know, for this game, too, an important inning, much like we talked about with Isaac Morton coming out the top of the second inning, because of the way the bottom half ended with some momentum in the UTSA dugout, the Aggies scored three, but they got a double play to end the inning, so UTSA will feel good about that. Important to come out and get the leadoff hitter to the next inning. Here's Zane Spin. Can't catch up to the fastball at 98. God, he throws hard. And he makes it look easy. It is a thunderbolt attached to his right shoulder. Now watch Jackson Appel. 
And SEC Network Plus, he holds that glove higher because there's so much sink as that ball goes out of play left side. There's so much sink that he was throwing it. It was a strike, but it would sink out of the strike zone last year. So he started higher. So Jackson Appel's glove, he will hold it by his mask. And that's where it will start. And then the sink on that fastball at 98 or 99. He's ahead of spin 0-2. Slider down and in. If he throws that pitch with confidence, it's another level then for him. Well, especially if he's getting the run on the heater like he has, and we saw him against Florida. When you throw that hard and you got the ball darting both directions, it's really, really tough for a hitter. One, two. Got him swinging a miss. He struck him out. He wiped him out with the slider. That is a devastating pitch. And you're walking back to the dugout, and I've did it a lot in my day, telling guys, good luck. He throws you that, you don't hit it. Look at the depth of this pitch. Exactly where he wanted it, back foot. It's really hard for left-handers not to move the bat there. Here's Caleb Hill. Ending not done, though. This not top of the roadrunner order is very potent. Swing and a miss. He started him with that slider. He has kind of adjusted that slider speed throughout his career, right? He tried it really, really hard, then backed off a little bit, and he's back in the upper 80s with it. This one taken on appeal, no swing, says Clayton Ham at third, one and one. I don't know if the fan base understands how much work Max Wiener has done with these kids to give them an individual plan to be successful, not an overarching plan. Obviously, dominate the zone, Swing and a miss, one and two. The dominate the zone mentality has overtaken the staff, but within that, he's given these individuals recipes for success, not just off hunches, but based off the metrics and the analytics. There's a reason why he was so highly thought of in professional baseball, because he had begun to become one of the masters in the pro game. At two down bases, empty, one, two. Cold strike three, struck him out. Strikes out the side, faces Travis Chestnut. And a fastball down the heart for a strike. He is a strike throwing machine. Not overpowering stuff, but everything cuts, sinks, and it's all presentable in the strike zone. Chestnut's 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. He skies this to shallow right. Talsig coming on. Makes the grab. One away. Roadrunners have been able to keep Chestnut off base for the most part tonight. When he did get on, I believe he was in a trail runner situation. So we haven't seen him get on the sacks and cause the havoc he's known for. No, he was the third aboard and that base is loaded in the second. Here's Gavin Grohovac. Singled his last time up. He has singled and walked. He's one for two. Fastball low, one ball and no strikes. All these guys that the Roadrunners have brought in, I think Miles' last inning was the only guy that we didn't see in that 93 mile an hour range. 1 0. Check swing. It's a strike on the inner half. Ball and a strike. Good run on that fastball. Righty righty matchup. Rio Haas, Angra Hovac. Tomahawk to center field. Shy of the warning track is Lytle. Two away. For not Jace Laviolette. Not bad Seven swing from Gavin. Probably got in on him a little bit. That arm side run when he had him on the swing and the miss. Yeah, and you can tell it's got a little bit of late life and mm -hmm. you see guys like Gavin check swing on a heater. You don't normally do that. Three on the right side of the infield for UTSA for Laviolette. Swing and a miss. Came down and in on the left-handed hitting Laviolette. UTSA up 5-4, two down, bases empty. Bottom of the sixth. The 0-1. Drilled down the right field line. Jace, extra bases. Two out double. Love that from Jace. Extend the inning with two outs. Stays above a heater in. 
Not one of his patented 118s off the bat, but still lines the ball out over the first baseman's head, and it is still fun to watch a six foot six, 230 pound kid move like that around the bases. Fair to say, at times he glides running. Yeah, you know it's, I mean? it's uncommon, especially in the it's, outfield. It's uncommon across any sport. I mean, you're, you're talking tight end size running that way. Here's Braden Montgomery. Starting with a change. 87, probably that little short cutter. Gotcha. Montgomery, two for three. He has single, doubled, and scored. Swing and a miss. Cutter again. One and one. He's now at 395, is Braden Montgomery. Second baseman Zane Spin is about five steps on the outfield grass beyond second base. And now to the right side goes the shortstop King. Swing and a miss, one and two. You know, I'm always interested with guys like yourself that have watched so much baseball. Where does Braden rank in the most talented players you've ever I mean, had the privilege of calling? Right up there. You know, and it's, even watching him at Stanford last year, the appreciation, one, two, swing and a miss. Struck him out. UTSA's best against is the slider to the right-handed hitting Mason Lytle. He comes up empty. He's 0 for 3, has struck out, flying to center, lined to Braden Montgomery and right. Christopher Cortez, the 0-1. Fastball down and away. Christopher Cortez. Jace, the shallowest of the outfielders in center. 1-1 one one to Lytle. Down and away again with a fastball. It's two and one. No curves, no sliders. We were talking about Riojas pitching to Montgomery last inning. I think I said it might have been a cutter. I was looking at just the miles per hour on it at 87. I think it's a splitter. Two one. Line to left field to Caden Sorrell. Oh, it's over him and off the glove. The liner stayed up. So Lytle to second base. Sorrell off the bat, makes two hard steps in, and then stops his feet. It's a tough read on a line drive right at you. Ball was very well struck, 102 miles an hour off the bat. Caden runs in and stops his feet. The general rule is if you're in the outfield and you get a liner at you and it's above the bill of your hat, you're going to have to stop your feet. If it stays below the bill of your hat, you can keep running through it. Olivo takes a fastball down and in at 99. One ball and no strikes, and Olivo has driven in two with two singles. He's been aboard all three times. He was hit by a pitch in the first. Swing and a miss. One and one. Liner by Lytle ruled a hit. I think if you ask Caden Sorrell, he'll personally feel like he it's a play he should make. One, one. Down and in. Two and one. He's over towards the line and left. Laviolette towards left center. Montgomery straight away and right. Two and one, the count to Olivo. Lefty against the righty, Christopher Cortez. Peaks back at second, the two one. Fastball missed inside at 98. It's three and one. Mario Hayden. Christopher Cortez. Lead-off double by Lytle. He's off second. 3-1 to Olivo. Swing and a miss. 3-1 changeup from Cortez. The pace open to Olivo, who's driven in a pair tonight. Let's see. The general rules. If it's good enough 3-1, it should be good enough 3-2. Ball four. Oh, come on. Come on. Went to the slider there. First and second, nobody out. He's actually just smirking. We're in the seventh. It's 5 4 UTSA. Roadrunners, shortstop number one, Matt King. Now, what does Coach Hallmark choose to do here with two men on, nobody out, protecting a one run lead and his best guy on the mound and nobody up working in the Roadrunner bullpen? King is 0 for 3. This could be a sack bunt. Corner of the infield's up on the grass. Fastball down and away. One ball and no strikes. Very different base runners here 
on the bags. Lytle at second is their best base runner, best base stealer. Obviously, Olivo being a big guy, not a great runner at first. The 1-0. Swing and a miss through the slider, 1-1. One one. Feels like a big moment in the game right here, doesn't it, Andrew? Sure does. First and second, nobody out here in the top of the seventh, and a one-ball, one-strike count to King and a righty-righty matchup. Swing and a miss, one and two. So far today, the Roadrunners have been advantageous, I would say, with men on. Correct. Not been great in terms of driving guys in, but advantageous would be a better word to describe it so far. The one-two from Cortez. Did he go? Down and away. Nope, check swing, two and two. You take a ground ball, but mm -hmm. you'd like a punch out ahead of one. Two ball, two strike count to Matt King. Pitch from Cortez. Got him, swing and a miss. He struck him out at 99 at the knees. Slider, 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 and you get used to it. It's a very firm slider, but you get used to it in that 88 to 91 range, and then he pumps the 99 at you. It makes it really tough. Now Brock Palmer, the batter. The catcher bats left. Nearly hitting Palmer. With a fastball down and in, 1-0. and Does the... Ability of Chris Cortez and the times he has started and been on the back end, this is almost higher leverage. He's kind of been in these situations before. It, it, the fortunate thing for the Aggie staff is Chris has pitched in just about every scenario. 1-0. Yeah. -oh. Swing and a miss. He ties him up inside with a slider 1-1. One and one. go back to his freshman year, and he was on the mound to close out the series win at Baton Rouge. So he's done a little bit of everything, and certainly the guy that can get you out of a jam. The 1-1 one, one is taken for a strike. One and two. And everybody wants punch outs, but wouldn't you take a two hop ground ball at Ali Camarillo right here? Yep. One, two. Topper to first. Burton's play is to first for the second outs. Second and third, two away. That has been UTSA tonight. Right, they don't hit anything hard enough for Ainham to really do anything defensively. And, you know, in fairness, the Aggies haven't done much defensively. Right. It's been one of the bigger stories of the game. But if that ball's hit a little bit harder, because of Olivo running, you just don't know what you've got in terms of plays in the infield. Now, a bloop single extends the roadrunner lead. Here's Talsig. Swing and a miss. And really an inning that should be over. Right? Yeah. On the I, first ball. Right. It's a tough, it's not an easy play. No, I agree. I agree. But it's, a, it, again, I mean, what have we seen out of Caden Sorrell so far this year? He's an outstanding outfield. Yep. The 0 1. Fouled into the net. He is over towards the line. Laviolette in left center. Yeah, it, in fair, you're surprised when the play's not made, is what I should say there. Just like Camarillo. Yeah. Yeah. Big moment in the game here. Two strikes. Second and third, two away. Pitch from Cortez, grounded towards the UTSA dugout. How did he hit that? That is the equivalent of a pitch being at um, Beeville. <laughs> well, <laughs> tell you what, the fan base, decent crowd here tonight, but haven't really gotten a chance right. to get up on their feet. This would be a big moment. The two strike pitch. Got him, swing and a miss. He buried the... Yankees down one, 5-4, as Appel leads off the seventh. Away, one ball, one strike. One of the really neat things, you talked about the splitter by Riojas. Last year, Jace Laviolette was at the Jimbo Fisher radio show, and I had to introduce Jace to Jimbo, who played college baseball up high, two and one, and all they talked was baseball, and. And Brawny, they got talking about the splitter because Jace was saying that's what he faced with Team USA. <laughs> he, he's told me that plenty of times. Yeah. <laughs> he had nightmares about some of those Japanese splitters. Yep, 2-1. This one's into center field. And into the mitts. Mason Lytle, one down. First time that Appel's been retired. The two homers and a walk. 
He said, yeah, that was, it was basically unhittable. And he had a good summer. Yeah, I mean, he had, what, four or five homers with Team USA? Yeah. And, you know, when you're hitting in that lineup that features Braden Montgomery, Jack Caglione, <laughs> J.J. Weatherholt, yeah. you know it must be pretty disgusting if all those guys are, are talking about how tough it was to hit. Here's Ted Burton. Skies this one right side. In foul ground, now in fair territory. Catch is made by Morrissey. The real Haas just running through these AM hitters. The numbers are impressive for a reason. And you'd like to see some pitch counts get elevated just so that the Roadrunner staff has to make a decision. But right now, it looks like they're keen on leaving their best guy out there and trying to head west with a win. Saturday, he went four innings against Charlotte. Fastball at the belt on the inner half for a strike. He started the first game against UT Arlington, five and two thirds. That's his longest. Four and two thirds at Tulane is his longest relief outing. They're not shy. He's gone four innings or longer, three outings. He's had three and a third twice, three innings twice. One and one to Hayden Shot. Swing and a miss. There's that splitter. That just dives right out of the strike zone. It's so hard when it's good and firm and presentable in the strike zone. I mean, Roger Clemens made a Hall of Fame career out of it. And there is not a soul in the Roadrunner bullpen. I'm not talking about not throwing. There's not even anybody out there. Topper to first. Morrissey to the bag, and the Aggies retired in order in the bottom of the hitting first baseman tonight. Facing the righty Cortez. Fastball at the knees at 98 for a strike. Grahovac toes on the grass at third. Much like we were wondering with Riojas, I wonder how long Cortez will stay in the game with an SEC Series Cup coming. If he is going to be the guy we're seeing right now, he's certainly going to be valuable against a pretty potent Vanderbilt lineup. Series starts Friday. Speaking of the Commodores, 14 to 1 over Middle Tennessee State. The Blue Raiders catch a beating from the Commodores tonight. Bouncing ball right side, Burton to Cortez covering. One away. Am I allowed to give away other scores? Or? Sure. Of course you are. <laughs> USC Upstate upsets Clemson in the midweek 9 to 5. Wake Forest up over number 20, Coastal Carolina. That's 12 to three in the top of the night. Tennessee puts 20 on Alabama A&M. The Volunteers are seriously swinging the bat right now. One down for Hector Rodriguez. Switch hitter batting left against Cortez, pushed off the plate. One and zero. Number seven Duke drops a midweek to William and Mary. Arkansas up five to one in the bottom of the eight over San Jose State. And a battle of the Carolinas tied at one. North Carolina and South Carolina in the bottom of the seventh. The 1 0. To center field, Jay Slaviolette. Seven steps to his right. The looper is caught two away. How about this one? Florida State 19. Florida 3 in the top of the sixth. Sixth? Seminoles making it hurt. That game being yeah. played in Tallahassee. Yeah, that one's personal. <laughs> and one of the hottest teams in the country, the Kentucky Wildcats, they trail Samford in the bottom, only the bottom of the second inning in Birmingham, five to nothing Bulldogs. They did a job against Alabama this they've weekend. Done, they've done a job against yeah. everybody. One I don't know. care who you're playing, 11 and one in this league. Agreed. Zane Spin. Smothered foul at the plate, one and one. You know, the later, we talked about this a little bit earlier, the later you get in the year, you start seeing more and more of these midweek upsets kind of pop up. Yeah. Sacramento State up 8-5 to five over number 18, Oregon, in the bottom of the fourth. <laughs> yep. 1-1 one, one to spin to left field. Two-out single for spin. To bring the top of the order, Caleb Hill to the plate here in the eighth. Good job there by Spin. Stays on a slider. 
Oh, it's a changeup. Yeah. Just an elevated changeup. Stays on it, shoots it the other way. Caleb Hill 0 for 2, hit by a pitch and a sacrifice. And a fastball for a strike. It's 0 and 1. Two out single by spin. Held on at first by Burton. Cortez peeks over. Christopher's 0 1. Fouled into the net by the Aggie on deck circle, third base side. 0 and 2. Well, we all had Missouri sweeping Florida this past weekend, right? <laughs> it's got to be pretty frustrating <laughs> to be a Gator fan this year, doesn't it? Yeah. You've seen the best that team can play for a long time, and you've also seen the worst yeah. they can play for an extended period of time. 0 oh, and 2, the count to Hill. Move to first. They got him. He was leaning, and spin is picked off for the third out in the top of the eighth. Perfect time to throw over by Christopher Cortez and the tag applied by Burton. Spin tagged out for the final outs. It's a great outing tonight if that's the end for Chris Cortez. All over the strike zone. Much like we mentioned Brock Peary did earlier in the game, Ruben Riojas comes in and really kind of stems the tide of the Aggie offense. They score three there in the bottom of the fifth and then two goose eggs with Riojas in the game. 1-0. Slider away again, then Ali lays off. He doubled, excuse me, he singled to right. The driving in, Ted Burton in the fifth. That capped the three-run inning. Two-run home run by Jackson Appel in that inning. 2-0. Over for a strike. And, Brawny, we know we always hear, oh, the home run is the momentum killer, but the Aggies don't stop after they hit the home run. They haven't. You know, this year the, the offense has been Pretty good, one through nine, it just kind of keep the pressure applied. Shows bunt, stays high and in, the breaking ball, it's three and one. Righty, righty matchup of Garza and Camarillo. Five, four, UTSA, we're in the bottom of the eighth. Three, one. Inside ball four, leadoff walk to Ali Camarillo. It's obviously a big base runner for the Aggies to start the bottom of the eighth, but if you're looking at the remainder of the game, I think this at bat might be the most important. Cade Sorrell. Because here's what I'm looking at. If he gets on base, who's on deck? Travis Chestnut. What does he do really well? Apply uh -huh. pressure and yes, you can let him do his thing. So, hitless tonight for Sorrell. We've also seen him stay on the ball and hit backside mm -hmm. homers. Ollie has six steals, swing and a miss. Changed on him. He's not thinking backside there. No, he wasn't. He was trying to give the Aggies the lead. Yeah. One strike on Caden Sorrell. He has walked, popped out, hit into an inning ending double play. Fastball that's just below the knees. Trackman has it just below the strike zone. One and one the count to the left-handed hitting Sorrell. Comedio lead off walk, he's at first. One, one. Fastball away, two and one. Holly bluffed going at first. Yeah, and I think that got Palmer up out of his stance and got into the line of the vision of the home plate umpire. We got that as a strike there. Two and one. The catcher may have taken one away from his pitcher. Low and away, it's three and one. Again, you talk about how you receive a baseball. Sure. Right? Three balls, one strike to Caden Sorrell with Camarillo at first. Pitch from Garza. And lines this into right center field. Over in the gap. Diving and coming up empty. is going to round third to tie this game at five. Sorrell all the way to third. Towson gambled and lost in right center. Elevated fastball and a 3-1 count. You walk the leadoff hitter with a one-run lead. The number one thing you didn't want to do is walk a second one. And Sorrell peppers this heater. 103 miles an hour right into the teeth of that north-northeast wind. And it gets by the right fielder. Diving attempt just under his glove. We've got a tie ball game. And you're going to have Travis Chestnut, Gavin Grahovic, and pretend in the game yep. that a lot of people don't see. Like, uh, that would have been a two-strike count. Right. And you would have gotten yep. ahead. And 
who knows what the pitch selection is if that's the scenario. Infield in for Chestnut. Sliders a strike. 0 oh and 1. Travis has walked, struck out, fly to right. Sorrell at third in a tie game. Jim Schlossnagel likes the contact play, but I don't think he'll put it on with Grahovic on deck. Bounced foul to the Aggie dugout, third base side, and Garza gets ahead, 0 oh and 2. And, and Sorrell's secondary lead at third base would indicate that. Usually, if you're going to go contact play, you're super aggressive trying to time up your secondary lead into the ball entering the hitting zone. And you're looking for a down angle off the bat. Two strike pitch to Chestnut called strike three. Got him with a change. One down. Very well located from Garza. Trackman has it on the plate. Breaking ball. Might have been a touch up, but if you're Travis at the bottom of the order, you got to move it back there. Here's Gavin Grahovac. The infield will stay in with one out and Sorrell at third. Garza to Grahovac. Slider down and away. Now you're probably going to pitch Grahovic a lot more careful than you did Chestnut. So in these RBI spots, Andrew, I always tell my guys, what you swing at is really important. Fouled straight back by Gavin. And you got a good one to make a pass at right there. But pitch selection in RBI spots is as important as anything. 13 strikeouts in his last two games. For Garza, seven at Tulane, six against Charlotte, 1-1. One, one. Upstairs, 2-1. and one. Caden Sorrell tied the game. RBI triple driving in Ali Camarillo, who led off this eighth with a walk, 2-1. Grahovac down the right field line towards the bullpen. Fair or foul? Foul ball. It bananaed foul at the end. Gavin will have to come back. Now it gets interesting with how you play this at third base. Infield remains in for UTSA. It's two and two to Gavin Grohovac. But the middle infield is almost at a, they're in the baseline. Yeah, it's like. We'll call it halfway, but it's like a step ahead of yeah, halfway, it, isn't it, it? It'll depend on contact. Watch the secondary from Sorrell here. 2-2. Two, two. Got him swinging a miss. He struck him out. Big, big pitches from Garza. Runner on third in a tie game and no outs, and he gets back-to-back -back strikeouts. Gets Gavin to expand the zone on the slider. Throws Chestnut on the breaking ball away. Aggies are one for seven with runners in scoring position. Now at third is Sorrell with two away. Swing and a miss by Jace Laviolette. Jace doubled his last time up. He's one for four. Three on the right side. Down, one and one. Actually, the shortstop, King, is behind second base. Second baseman's spin is five steps on the grass in shallow right. And deep at first is Morrissey. Sorrell can be really aggressive on a ball in the dirt here. Bounced foul. First base side, it's one and two. Staying at third is Hector Rodriguez. So shortstop is vacated with Matt King behind second base. That's the alignment on the right side for UTSA. One and two is the count. Jace Laviolette. Two down, Sorrell at third. Jace bounces foul, first base side. This actually, of course, is quick to the plate. Man, look at the space Sorrell has. Sorrell's a really good runner. And his lead has to be as far from the bag as third baseman it Rodriguez. Be. It yeah. can be. Now, now they're doing One and two. So he is essentially in the line of sight for the pitcher. Check swing just off the plate. Appeal, no swing, says Clayton Ham at third. Trackman has that off the plate. So two and two to Jace Laviolette. Sorrell at third, the pitch. Now 
outside, ball three, three and two to Jace Laviolette. Well, that's a tough take. It's almost the exact same pitch he got rung up on in the first inning. Tied at five. We're in the eighth, Sorrell at third. The three, two to Laviolette. Called strike three, he struck him out. With a runner at when spin was picked off by Christopher Cortez in the first pitch slider is a strike to Hill. The righty Cortez, the left-handed hitting Hill, leading off the ninth, tied at five. The 0-1. Bouncing ball foul wide of first. Gavin Grahovac was up on the grass on the first two pitches. Now he, the third baseman, will move back. Another chance for, you know, this game has really been momentum based, right? Like, Aggies get a game tying triple runner at third, no outs, and then UTSA strikes out the side. Aggies don't put a ball in play. Give yourself a chance to take the lead. And so all that momentum from the triple goes right back to the UTSA dugout. 0 oh, 2 to Hill. In on the fist as he chokes up a little bit, fights that off to stay alive, 0 oh, 2. There is action in the Aggie bullpen. I can't tell who's throwing, but I can see a ball moving. Maybe Brad Rudis. Here's the 0-2. Check swing on appeal. No swing, says Clayton Hill. One and two to Caleb Hill. One, two from Cortez. Slider down and in. On appeal, called strike three. That slider has been deadly tonight, especially when he's throwing the back foot for two strikes. And these left handed hitters from UTSA said earlier, Andrew, it is really hard to stop the bat on that pitch. It just presents as a strike for so long. Mason Lytle is one for four. He doubled his last time up. Could not check his swing. 0 oh and 1. With that double, Lytle back above 400 at 401. 0 oh 1 from Cortez. Fastball down the heart at 99. It's 0 oh and 2. This is as good as we've seen from Chris Cortez since that outing in Gainesville. One down, the bases are empty, tied at 5 in the top of the ninth. Two strikes on Lytle. Pitch from Cortez. He got him on three pitches. Two down here in the ninth. And that's what makes that slider when he's throwing it for a strike. That's what it's so deadly because at any moment, there's 98 to 100 right behind it. And he throws a heater at the bottom part of the zone. Good arm side run there. But to just to freeze the best hitter in the UTSA lineup, because in the back of Lytle's mind, here comes another slot. Alexander Levo, the batter. High bouncer left side, deep short, Camarillo. High throw tag by Burton. For a one, two, three, top of the ninth. And that is a Mas Fajitas, Mas Hustle play of the game. Mas Fajitas, proud partner of Texas A&M Athletics. What a beauty by Camarillo. Camarillo to his backside, backhand side gets a big hop, knows he's got a little. Big in Charlotte, five runs in three and two thirds. Montgomery pops up the first pitch, shallow center. Caught in the outfield grass by Matt King, the shortstop. One down. Here's Jackson Appel, who has homered twice. Well, I'll tell you what, though, Andrew, like, honestly, if offensively, Outside of the bottom of the eighth, it's and even then they scored the game time run. It's been a pretty good night for AM. Ten hits, some loud outs. Fastball from Orlowski is a strike. But you'll look back offensively, you'll look back at those first two innings, leaving the bases loaded with one out. And then maybe even that bottom of the eighth runner at third and no outs. Could have been more. Appell to left field. Did he do for it? For his third home run. 
Let's go home. He did! Olsen Magic Jackson Appel, his third home run of the game, gives the Aggies a 6-5 to five win. It can be anybody on any night with this ball club, Andrew Monaco. And they're dogpiling or they're, they're crowding around, jumping up.